state-of-the-art SIMs like Curator can ingest tons of logs, net flows, queue flows, pickup data, information coming from other security tools that may or may not be IBM's, uh, threat intelligence um, uh, in the format of stick and taxi or any other uh, uh, form, use uh, user behavior analytics in order to detect anomalies, incidents. We call those offenses. And why can Curator easily do that type of work? Well, because this data is presented typically in some uh, format, like uh, if it's, for example, TCP IP data, you have some headers that uh, we know exactly where the source and destination IP and port is and other aspect of the data like applications etc and and we know where the payload is and we know how to inspect the payload and all that in other words this data is structured in nature and when the data is structured it fits very well into databases and when once data is on a database well we can do wonderful things with them like we can correlate that data in other words we can see what are the what is the common IP that is related to all these events? Uh, host name, application name, user name, etc., and make sense out of it. And most importantly, we can search that data with ease because we have indices that uh, shows us where all that data uh, resides. But in today's world, with so many attacks going, so much money put in in, in the hackers uh, to to do attacks on on us, the good guys, uh, new malware gets generated. And, and when, when one of those offenses fires, oh, is this an existing malware? Is this a new malware? What's the relevance of this type of attack on my, uh, on my uh, company? What is the resolution that I can pad, that I can take to actually correct and stop this type of attack? What SOC operators have been doing today is actually reaching out to Google and look for uh, data that is indexed, meaning data that Google went out and, and with the crawlers, you know, found indices. So if you put the right search, you can actually find that data. The problem is that there is too much of it. In the case of security, for example, some of that data, you know, there might be some good research documents, some security blocks, some report from some analysts. Well, which are the good analysts? Which are the ones you may trust or not? You may be developing your own experience. There might be some good customer uh, conference presentations of, uh, of, of white hats that had uh, talked on the topic. Um, some good newsletters. Uh, there might be data about these people or the, even the attackers uh, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Tweet. And this data might be indexed uh, uh, in nature. I mean, most of the most of it uh, is. Uh, but if, so you need to produce the right type of search to find what you're looking for because there's way too much data out there. But there's also other type of data that you know, like vulnerability disclosure. Of course, the information in the dark web that many of us don't even go there. Some key emails being posted in there with information. Telemetry from IoT uh, that, that is more plentiful. Uh, there might be some data of it that is uh, explained on a good podcast or audio on, on, on part of a video uh, and so much stuff that you may not find because this data begins to be uh, non-indexed. So it's outside the reach of uh, Google uh, to find that. So the same technology that help us so much on this side of the equation with all that uh, of that data cannot really help us on the unstructured world because it requires human understanding. This is something that the SOC operator need to read on this process and understand like we only humans can. Or can we? But even when I find it uh, and, and I'm processing this simply too much. What's the relevant information? There's so much stuff up there that uh, for as many offenses that we can be getting on a day, I cannot be successful by repeating uh, this, this process. So to give an example, if we ask a powerful computer, a simple question, who run GE? Just like that and you will expect the answer to be Jack Wells, right? 
but how will a computer will know that? Well, if I have a database with that nice structured data, when I have the table of former CEOs and, and corporation, all I need to do is tweak around with some semantic on the on the word run, uh, meaning that that's that was a CEO, and then I can come up uh, with the question that is Jack Welch. But that's not the way that, as we have said, that the data exists on the internet. But in the internet, on the structure form, you find a quote like this. If leadership is an art, then surely Jack Welch has proved himself a master painter during his tenure at GE. So nowhere you find the word RAND, CEO, or anything like that. So this requires a lot of uh, human knowledge, you know, to understand semantics. Uh, synonyms. Uh, metaphors of the painter etc and this is what is called natural language and certainly we have proven that Watson by playing the Jeopardy game was able to really extract and derive that type of information because it does understand natural language when Watson was put to work into the healthcare space, one of the first things that uh, needed to be done uh, was to teach the what's on the medical uh, jargon and also have it ingest gazillions of uh, patient data so it knows about the history of the patient that a doctor cannot keep on their mind because they see lots of patients. It might be some, some patient referred from another doctor. And the tone of medical uh, uh, literature, which uh, apparently 90% of it is uh, new, is generated uh, in the last two years. So this is impressive. And, and not only that, uh, but also doctors do not have the time for doing this. It, it is understood that a doctor, a good doctor, takes only five hours every week to do research and to study and to keep himself uh, up to the latest uh, technology. Well, we have something in common with doctors here in the security space, don't we? So all that information, once ingested and understood with natural language to, to Watson, was what formed what is called the corpus of knowledge. It's a fancy name for all that all that data. But is, is all the, the stuff that you consume relevant and good? No. So the best doctors would put to work on this corpus and, and, and they toss a bunch of information and they made more information relevant uh, uh, than others. And we put Watson uh, to the test. Watson test was to pass the US Medical Board of Exams. So now doctors have a tool that allows them to have all the history of, of, of the patient, have the symptoms and you know asking questions to the patient it, it fits uh, that to Watson and Watson comes up with a probable diagnosis and, and the best treatment uh, for that for that patient and hypothesis and, and everyone this is just a hypothesis that Watson makes and but it shows the degree of confidence that has uh, about that hypothesis and presents the evidence so the doctor can actually see why is it that Watson thinks that 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 is the case but it doesn't stop like by just doing that when a doctor makes a decision and the patient keeps on coming and we see the evolution of the of the patient whether the treatment was successful or not Watson learns from that and that's one of the aspects of machine learning that is embedded into Watson so it becomes better with with experience but let's go back now to security so we repeated the same playbook and, and teach Watson the, the, all the, the things about, you know, what malware, what is a black hat, what is this, that. Uh, and that took, took us uh, quite some time and we put our best experts and people like Sandy Bear, who created Curator, was actually an uh, integral part of, of this team, to actually curate that corpus and make sure that we put only the relevant information. And we put Watson security to the test. And, and, and we see whether he could pass the, the security certification exam and he passed it with 95%. And in fact, our experts believe that that extra 5%, the questions were too ambiguous and not well, well done. So Watson is was now ready to begin to help those SOX operators uh, to discern what is really what important and provide uh, relevant information on, on their offenses. What we have created and expect to have available soon to customers is now the capability from Curator to feed those offenses 
into Watson for cybersecurity and and allow to provide answers to some of the questions that the, uh, the SOC operator may have. Again, in the same format that we help with a with a uh, percentage of confidence and presenting to the SOC operator the evidence that support those uh, those uh, recommendations. But this is not really something to replace the SOC operator. Think of this as when you drive with a state-of-the-art GPS that has uh, traffic information based on, you know, crowdsourcing and is really up-to-date and all these people feeding data about uh, what was the best way to, to go to the traffic. Uh, having radar detectors to make sure that if you by mistake uh, speed up, you are not stopped and then delayed and and put fine that has a weather condition that talks about you know the, the conditions of the road uh, to uh, to for you to to make decisions about uh, how fast you can actually go the, the idea is that the gps will help you get to your place better but it doesn't drive for you and you can actually override the gps in fact uh, think of this as something that has a GPS with machine learning capabilities in which if you override the GPS or you take this decision or that decision, the GPS learns, well, how fast did the guy get to, get to his place? Maybe this is a better route than the one that you learning things and keep on learning and becomes better and better uh, as you use it. And in, in the security space, once you have made your determination, now you can actually have the capability of sending that, uh, that offense and initiate uh, the the process of uh, of uh, fixing and closing that uh, that offense by feeding automatically that uh, information into your uh, uh, RAP your uh, incident response platform like like resilient.